Welcome to Feisty Chess. I've got black here against Nona32. There's uh, d4. We'll play knight f6. Maybe I'll shoot for a king's Indian if I can manage it. Okay. I haven't played king's Indian in a long time. This could be rough. I just got back from a tournament yesterday. Uh, Four-day tournament. I went... Uh, Went three and one, so it was good. <clears throat> Bishop f4, so this is not the usual King's Indian. I think this, the same setup should work fine, though. I could have gone. Hmm. Um, knight d7 looks reasonable here. Am I really threatening e5? I don't think so. That that can you can do that tactically in the King's Indian, but not hmm. Okay. Uh lots of moves come to mind. C6, C5, Knight A6, Knight C6, Knight D7, Bishop G4, Rook E8. <clears throat> I'll go with rookie eight. The idea of getting e5 in at some point. Now, do I want to push this through with knight d7 or bishop g4? You know, rookie eight didn't really do that, did it? Okay. Let's go for c5. This is the alternate plan. <clears throat> uh, rookie 8 might have been the wrong idea if I was going to go for this. But Hmm. What to do here? Castle Kingside. Hmm. Play nice e six. <clears throat> This might, might this knight might get kicked around a little bit, but it can come back. It can go to b4 and then a6, and then I'm trying to provoke d5. Well, white doesn't have to play d5. In the King's Indian, you want to keep this bishop back for uh, a king side attack. It often sacks itself on, on h3. I don't have to play like that. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, let's come back here. <clears throat> I'm expecting a3, and then I'll go knight a6. And maybe the knight will make its home on c7. That doesn't seem very ambitious, though, does it? Okay, I haven't played the opening the best here. Maybe e6 is my break, you know. Uh, Bishop f5 is starting to look good. Just to get a clamp down on that square. Okay, but white negates that possibility. Let's, uh, 
<clears throat> Let's see if White wants to leave the position closed or if he's going to take on Passant. Put the ball in their court for a little bit. Okay, opens things up. Uh, oh, the awkward part here is I need to take with a rook where d6 is hanging. Somehow I didn't see that one coming. But is d6 going to survive if I, uh, if I take with a rook? Let's just take with the rook anyway. <laughs> he got, he's got knight. Oh, he's got knight g5 here. Yeah. Okay. Back we go. And we're dropping our pawn here. Ugly stuff, guys. I must be like exhausted chess wise from the tournament. Or insert whatever excuse you like. <clears throat> okay, I'll be down a pawn, but it's not the end of the world. I I have a healthy kind of position otherwise. I think. I don't really want a queen trade. But I might not have much choice. I'm just going to kind of get developed here. And if he wants to trade queens, I at least get my, my other rook into the game. He can take... My bishop with his knight, of course. It's just the price I'm willing to pay to finish my development. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> I gotta get serious here. And I'll have some initiative against this e4 pawn if if he takes, and I take with rook, I assume he'll take here, and I'll have my, both my rooks in the game with pressure on e4. Okay. We're doing this. He just well, it solidifies e4 like that. <clears throat> I wonder if knight h knight h5 is worthwhile here. Do I have any kind of tactics? Oof. Actually, knight h5, and he doesn't have any places on that diagonal he can go. And then I could maybe double on the uh, on the d-file. But I don't think doubling helps at all. That just invites rook trades, which don't look good for me. I don't want to trade rooks. Hmm. But actually, okay, I'm going to go for that to try to hamper his queenside pawn structure. I'll have bishops against knights, but I'll have a healthier pawn structure. That's, that's something. That's at least an imbalance I can work with. My knights will both be terrible, however. He can't go bishop d2, so his, I can take his knight at will here. Probably he'll go bishop e3. Huh. 
my bishop is such a nice piece. Oh, okay, he goes for that. Uh, this makes, makes some sense. Do I want to stay on the D file? He's got points he could penetrate if I don't. I could play this. Let's do this, and then we can get f5 in. I'm assuming he'll go back to e3, but then, but then I have f5, and that pawn is pinned. So that's kind of nice. See, the nice thing about our knight here is at least using performing a useful function of supporting important c6 pawn. Okay, decision time with the rooks. His rook is coming to the seventh. I do have bishop. If bishop here, the trouble is his knight. His knight's going to jump to d5, and that. Well, okay. Bishop here. Uh, let's say he takes knight d5, and I'm losing that pawn. So we got to. I think I got to trade this pair of rooks. Do I want to trade both pairs of rooks? He could take with the knight. Let's trade. Maybe he'll take with the knight. That has its own problems if he wants to save his, uh, his pawn structure here. I wonder if f4 would be worthwhile. Kicking that bishop around a little bit. Uh, let's let's do this. This this plan <clears throat> is a little better. Hmm. Am I getting my pawn back? Let's let's do it. Yeah, I forgot about that. Bishop takes c3 actually removes the defender. <clears throat> I'm getting my pawn back and also skewering his bishops, although he has a defense. Uh, this doesn't look like he has a defense. I think I'm winning a bishop here. Maybe he meant to check me? But both his bishops are under attack. He doesn't have checks. And I got my pawn back, so... Okay, things really swung my way pretty quickly here. <coughs> so I don't see any reason not to grab this bishop. He does have a check, but better than letting my rook get pinned. So let the check come. I will go to, oh, he's not going for the check. Ah, interesting. Very interesting. He's okay. Well, let's just go into pawn grabbing mode, I guess. Uh, my knight, my knight can't can't make it actually. This, this, this. He's got a nice set of pawns. If I go knight b4, um, I can try to attack with knight b8, but then he forks king f7. He's got to kind of waste some time to capture my knight in the corner there. Probably king g7 actually.
Yeah, I like I like losing the knight here better. This allows me my king to come into the game a little more. He throws the bishop check in. I don't lose the knight. Check now king f8, and now the rook fork can be met with rook e8. So yeah, that's what he wants. I think king d7, just so my king isn't subject to checks. <clears throat> and now let's chow down on some pawns of our own. And I'm going to get one of these pawns. And we'll have a pawn advantage. Although I wasn't able to keep the knight. Okay, now he's threatening a check to win my A pawn, but I win his first. <clears throat> Where's my knight want to go? I feel like I have good winning chances here. I've got checks. Let's let's put the knight here. <clears throat> oh, and if rook takes, oh, this is a this is a nice little trap. But unfortunately, it doesn't do the whole job. Um, let's see. Ah, oh, there's a tactic here. The problem is he has an intermediate check. Now I can go king here, but that, that's not exactly a good king move unless he sees, if, if he doesn't see what I'm up to. Oh, you know what? Huh, I've got a better tactic. Force him to f2, <clears throat> and now I've got a fork. Okay. Always check the checks. All right. So not a very good opening here. Let me learn a little thing, a little bit about this, uh, how I misplayed this opening. He goes for a late bishop f4, turning my king's Indian into more of a London here. Um, okay, knight b to d7 would have been good. Yeah, rookie, rookie 8 is not a move in this position. Looks like knight to d7 is, is the idea. Let's look for a couple more moves, see what, what kind of follows up. Why, why h3? I'm not sure. Bishop e2 makes more sense to me. Um, <clears throat> oh, h3 to preserve the bishop, right? Because I can go knight h, h5. I never think about doing that kind of thing. In an opening, um, temp time is more important for me than, than, than bishop moves or, you know, bishop pair. c6. Uh, h3. a6. Ah. Kind of boring stuff for a King's Indian. That's not what you're going for when you want to do the King's Indian. Anyway, dropped a pawn in the opening. And exactly where that happened was, yeah, it was e5, allowing him to take on Passant. And I don't, I, I didn't realize, I mean, I knew my, my e pawn was a weakness. I didn't realize it was d pawn. I didn't realize it was immediately a weakness. And this is a vain attempt to try to, probably didn't help trying to hang on to that with rook take e6. So. Looking pretty grim here. <clears throat> Fortunately, I had enough of the initiative. This kind of stuff. And he, he sh I figured he'd go back to bishop g5 here. But he didn't go for that. This allows me to get the pawn back. More importantly, this allows me to almost to gain a piece. Yeah, so this is probably an equal-ish position. <clears throat> I got the extra pawn, but he's, there's no way of defending c5. 
Well, I do have a way of defending c5 here, as was shown in the game. So this this just loses the rook as a uh, tactic in the game. But uh, h4, not bothering too much about that pawn. Eventually, you know, once he repositions his king, I won't have a defense of that pawn. I, I can sit. I can park my knight here, I guess. So it's it's definitely White's game to lose because I got the extra pawn. But the computer's not convinced that it's a winning event. But knights in the ending, huh, supposedly inferior to bishops, but in a practical sense, superior, I think, especially in a quicker time control like this, because the old saying goes, bishops are better, which I'm not even sure about. Uh, on, on a, in a position like this in general, maybe yes, with pawns on both sides of the board, the bishop's just more mobile. Bishops are better, maybe, but even if they are, knights are more dangerous, as we showed here. And here's here's the tactic, just in case you missed it. Um, picking up the rook and just having an obviously winning game. So, uh, thanks for watching, folks, and stay feisty.